Hey guys, this is Claudia here from The Bookkeeping Expert. I absolutely love to help people like you understand QuickBooks Online. I've been a bookkeeper for over 20 years and I am a Pro Advisor Certified Agent. Um, so here, today we're going to cover a subject that I listen, I hear all the time from my clients. Um, and actually the source of many issues if not set up properly in QuickBooks Online. So we're going to cover some of them and some of the items that you have to watch out. Okay, here we go. First of all, we're going to log into QuickBooks Online. This is a sample account and I'm just setting up this account. So one of the first things we do when we set up a new account in QuickBooks, this is, like I said, this is just a sample account, is um, first we sign up for the, if you want just a free 30-day uh, trial, you can try that. Or if you want to sign up, the first thing you're going to do is, you know, you're going to put all your company's information. You're going to link the bank into QuickBooks and you're going to create your products and service. Those are the basics. Now, what are products and service? Products and service, pretty much all the, the products and services you offer our cl your clients. So when you create an invoice or a sales receipt, that's what you're going to see. That's what you're going to select in order to create that sales receipt. Now, there are times when clients set up incorrectly. Um, a product and service sometimes can be a product, an inventory product, sometimes it can be just a service, sometimes it could be actually a sale, uh, is a sale for a deposit, means that a liability account. So uh, let's suppose I charge a $1,000 uh, deposit to my clients in order to uh, reserve a reception hall. So I have a reception hall, I suppose I charge five five thousand dollars to rent that reception hall and uh, but I require my my brides a thousand dollars which is a refundable deposit now there's a difference here refundable versus non-refundable when it's non-refundable you don't necessarily need to put it on a liability account but if I say it's refundable then I will put on a liability account because I have not earned this money have not earned this money if the client requested this money to be refunded I do not want that as an income I want that as a short-term liability okay so that's one thing that I, we're gonna cover but we're gonna start by creating a simple service okay so I click on service and I'm just gonna put consulting services. Okay. All right. So you can put a description, and then I'm gonna select here the income account. Okay. So you don't need to have several income accounts, and you don't wanna have several income accounts. You can have a couple of income accounts, and you can have a thousand products. And services in QuickBooks because um, the product and service does not have to be assigned to a different income account. It can all go into sales, right? So in this case, I'm going to select sales. I'm going to save and close. Okay, this is just a simple service account. There it is. Actually, we had consulting service, our sales. Okay, so this we have a few of them. Uh, let's suppose that you actually have, you want to track inventory, okay? And let's suppose that you maybe use a third-party app such as Shopify or Square, and you don't want to enter your 400 products and service manually in QuickBooks. Okay, so what you do, you can actually import those either as an Excel spreadsheet, Excel spreadsheet format or a CSV file, which is a Excel spreadsheet with no no comma, whatever it is. So either one works into QuickBooks Online. So you wanna go to your Shopify or your Square, you wanna export your services or you, the list, your ser products and service list into your computer on an Excel format or a CSV format. 
And then here on QuickBooks Online, you're gonna log in, click on the arrow right next to new and click on import. Okay. From here, you can just uh, import, just browse from your computer and then go through the whole process. So very, very good. All right, so we're gonna create a um, retainer uh, liability account. But before we create that, we're gonna create the account in the chart of accounts. Okay, <clears throat> chart of accounts, to create a new chart of account, account, account right next here under on the on the right hand side top where it says new click on new okay it's gonna automatically put bank account hey this is not a bank account <laughs> it's gonna be a liability so we're gonna click on the arrow okay and we're gonna select on the current liability usually uh, your your clients will book it within a year so or you're gonna earn that income within a year. So we're gonna call other current liability. There are situations where it could be a long-term liability if usually you hold <clears throat> for over one, one year. All right, so we're gonna select. <clears throat> other current liability. And we're gonna call deposit. Deposit. Okay, it's not a sub account, it's just a deposit. And we're gonna go ahead and save and close. That's all we're gonna do, right? So we created that liability account. What is a liability account, Claudia? Liability, well, you probably know that. <laughs> Sorry if I um, explained too much, but basically, you have not earned that money. So that's why you put it on a liability. It's a liability on your account and it's gonna show up on your balance sheet, not on your profit and loss, which is what we want. All right, so now we're gonna go back to sales, products and service, and we're gonna create that um, deposit. Okay, so it's gonna be a service and we are gonna call that deposit or initial deposit, whatever you wanna call it. Okay, now see that you can actually put um, a description if you like, and then if you want to put the sales price, you can, or if you don't want to, you can just leave it open so you can fill it out when you create your sales receipt or your um, uh, your uh, invoice. Okay, so on the income account, this is the important part. You're gonna click on the arrow, now remember, this is a deposit, and it's a refundable deposit. We're gonna select that account that I just created. We're gonna click on the arrow. We're gonna go to short-term liability. We're gonna go, oh, what is, okay. Oh, right here, <laughs> the current liability, I'm blind. Okay, so deposit, <laughs> I've selected my deposit here and we're gonna save and close. Okay, now, um, now if you want to create an inventory in QuickBooks Online, in this case, uh, I got to turn on inventory tracking. Okay. Okay, it's always going to be in FIFO. So it means first, first in, first out. So and there's no other option with QuickBooks. Um, some companies sometimes like not to track inventory through QuickBooks because sometimes it's not the best. So if you have... Um, Shopify, for instance, and you want to track your inventory just through Shopify or Square, you can do that. And then what, what happens, you just want to get a report at the end of each month, and you update manually through a journal entry in QuickBooks. So you can adjust your inventory manually in QuickBooks, inventory and cost of goods sold. So 
Um, now, if you want to track that, we're going to turn it on. And um, we're going to wait. <laughs> we're going to wait. There it is. Okay. All right. There it is. That coming. Inventory track. There it is. So now I'm going to create an inventory product and service. Like I said, if you have several of them, you don't want to manually enter them. You don't have to. Um, but here I will. Now, one thing that I wanted to mention to you is that most of the time, inventory is going to be taxable. Okay. So sometimes your consulting, your services will, is not, depending on the state, is not taxable. Like here in Florida, Florida is not taxable, but it may be for you. But inventory usually is. Okay, ex with a few exceptions. Okay, so we're going to call this, um, let's see, sell a product t-shirt. Okay, I'm going to call uh, bookkeeper's t-shirt. T-shirt. All right. Now, initial quantity. When you enter a product, you always want to put zero because if you put any quantity in here, it's going to create an opening balance error in your equity account and you have to clear that out with the journal entry after. So in this case, we're going to put zero. Even if you have inventory, that's okay. You always put zero here and then you update that as a journal entry. So I'm going to put zero. And as of today's date, and I'm not going to put a reorder point, but you can if you want to. So every time you go down to, let's say, 50 products, if you want to reorder that, you can set it up here. Okay, it is inventory. Now, I wanted to tell you something very important. In order to track inventory, you do need to have um, subscription for either a plus or, or advanced. So if you have essentials or simple start is not going to give you the option to track inventory so you do have to have plus or advanced very important so you're not going to get frustrated trying to set it up a inventory product and not not getting there okay did i misspell t-shirt no come on t-shirt yes needs a dash okay uh so no reorder zero here so the inventory asset account is inventory asset. So then we'll leave it at that. It sells of product income. I can put the description, small t-shirt. Oh, by the way, if you have a SK, uh, SKU for that product, you can use that, you can enter that. All right, so you can track that. In the purchasing information, you can put that purchasing information too. So here I can put the sales price is $20 per t-shirt and let's suppose it cost me $15 so when I sell those t-shirts it's gonna record that you know $20 income and $15 cost of goods sold all right so revenue $20 and um, and the cost is $15 right so when I enter an invoice or sales receipt it will automatically record that uh, expense for me so you can put a preferred vendor if I if you want to if not just leave it alone and I'm gonna save and close all right so I have all the products and service that I want for now now how do I use this on on a sales receipt or invoice so uh, first of all let's quickly cover what's the difference between invoice and sales receipt we covered that on prior videos you can go and watch it again but i'll explain to you quickly okay so a sales receipt means that you you have your money you have the money you have received the money in hands and you're just recording this the sale of the product now whenever i record it there is a workflow for that and in quickbooks online you have to do first you enter if you're using invoice you're entering invoice then you receive the payment you're going to record the payment into undeposited funds and then you're going to record a deposit <laughs> and i'm going to tell you why on deposited funds because if you have multiple deposits um, that's how you can record that deposit and that's an extra measure of security to avoid 
duplicate transactions and so on and so forth. And undeposited funds doesn't go to your income uh, statement or your profit and loss. It will go to your balance sheet. So if there are errors, it's not going to go into your uh, profit and loss. And uh, I do have a lot of videos on undeposited funds. If you need to watch that, go to my prior videos. I'm going to put a link in down below so you can watch it. Very important, very important video to understand the entire workflow of QuickBooks. But here we go. We're going to do a sales receipt because I already received the money. Now, if I have not received the money, and I want to send an invoice to the client. This is what I would go with the invoice. But we're going to do sales receipt. Um, this is a sample account, so everything is new here. Oh, and it's taking its time. Save new. Okay, there it is. Let's sell it to Jim, my customer. Okay, save it. I'm not going to put an email. You can if you want to. This is the sales receipt date. Okay, look at this. I have a checking one, two, three here, but I don't want that. I want undeposited funds, okay, undeposited funds, and uh, I actually am just uh, offering consulting services, I'll just put $100 here, okay, and I'm going to save, and it's going to go to undeposited funds. So now the next step, which is the workflow in QuickBooks, is to click on the plus new, go to bank deposit and record the deposit. Okay, so I went to the bank already. I got this check from Jim, went to the bank and deposited in the bank. So now I'm gonna record the deposit in QuickBooks Online. Uh, it was on undeposited funds because I received the payment for him. I didn't deposit right away, but now I am depositing it. So select Jim date of the deposit, the account that it's going to, and everything looks fine. Now we're gonna save and close. The next step is to go into banking. I have not connected my banks yet, but let's suppose if it's connected in here, what you would do, you go into banking. No, we're not gonna connect right now. So we're gonna go into banking there, and then we're gonna find that transaction we're gonna match it to that uh, deposit that I recorded. Now keep in mind, with QuickBooks, you always have to match it if you enter sales receipt or an invoice. And uh, the reason why, you and like I said, you always want to match it to a deposit, not to a payment, not to a sales receipt, to a deposit. So that's why you have to send to sale to um, undeposited funds. All right, okay. So um, what if it is a, deposit. Let's go and record that deposit. We're going to see what happens to that whole deposit, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I'm going to record here that I received cash. Okay, so uh, this one is my best customer. Spell right, Claudia. There it is. Okay, save it. My best customer. Okay, we're going to deposit into an undeposited fund. Oh, actually, in this case, because I'm receiving cash and because I don't have the link account yet, I'm going to select petty cash here. Okay, and I'm going to select the deposit. charge this a thousand dollars remember it's a refundable deposit and it's going to my cash account my patty cash okay got it all right here and we're gonna save and like I said when it's a sales receipt it means that it's already received right and in this case because it's cash 
I'm not going to put it on the undeposited funds because I did not deposit on my bank account. Because if I have deposited on my bank account, I would put it into undeposited funds and then record it to deposit. Okay, let's save. Okay, when I X out of here, I already saved. You're going to see what's going to happen now. All right, so we're going to go to accounting. Okay, and we're going to see the results of that deposit. So we had a thousand dollars deposit that went to my petty cash and in quickbooks there's always two sides of the transaction one side um it's going to be in this case the the where the account is going to be deposited and the other side is going to be uh if it is sales or if it is a liability or if it is an asset or so on and so forth so in this case it's going to be a liability so while it deposited on the petty cash it also recorded the liability liability under deposit so if i want to see that transaction i click on view register and voila okay that's how it works I just wanted to show you how it works when you set up your product and service and that product and service the specific products and service is a liability account now um, very careful when creating your product and service guys you want to make sure that number one if it is taxable you need to set up as taxable okay so how do you, for, first of all, you gotta set up your taxes, which is right here on the, the left hand side menu, according to whatever state you live in. The good thing is that QuickBooks will keep everything updated. So if the taxes increase, it will automatically um, update in the system as well. That's great. I love it. Okay, so um, here are the products and service that we created. So some of them, our products some of them are services and some of them are liability some of the errors that we also we always see on our clients book is when they create the product <clears throat> as an inventory okay sometimes they set it up as taxable when it's non-taxable then it creates a liability on your book each time you record that that sale for that specific product. Um, if you are merging or if you are uh, integrated with a third party uh, system, if taxes is not set up here, or if it is set up here for one amount, which is updated, and in the other product is slightly different, sometimes it's just a rounding issue, it might cause issues here when migrating those, those products as well. So you gotta be careful with that, right? And the other issue is that a lot of times when people create the account, they will choose the incorrect income account over here. And I had a client that was recording all their products under cost of goods sold. So we were looking at the profit and loss for this customer. And we saw a bunch of negative transaction on her cost of goods sold which means that she was recording her income under cost of goods sold. And we were trying to figure out how did she do it? And then we thought, ha, it's in the products and service. And sure enough, when the customer created those accounts, it could have been migrated incorrectly or whatever it was. It under the products and service, it was selected as a cost of goods sold. So what's the fix for that? You just go and fix it over here, okay? Um, so another issue might be um, your taxes are not set up and then you don't get any tax liability and but you know you want tr to track your tax liability. So you gotta set it up before you create that product and service and then or if you already created and you need to correct you're gonna go right next to the item right next uh, to it on the blue you click on add it and you'll be able to update that information 
okay here is not uh, set up yet because I don't have my tax set up for this uh, for this account we may get that next time next week but um, thank you so much for watching this video I hope this was helpful to you uh, if you like it uh, please subscribe to our channel we will bring those videos on a constant basis and we hope that we'll be able to bring items that will help you understand how to use QuickBooks Online to understand your business and be able to succeed in your business by being able to watch your finances and see how you're doing. If you would like to hire us, you can. We do offer Zoom meetings uh, 101. You can actually contact us. Down below is our phone number, our website. You can, um, you can hire us uh, for a one hour, two hour Zoom meeting or to train your employees, whatever you need, just contact us. A lot of our clients will actually hire us to help clean up and bring everything up to date. And then we're going to teach them how to maintain it. Whatever needs you have, please feel, feel free to contact us on the contact down below. Uh, please write, what are your pain points in QuickBooks Online? And we'll be able to take a look at that and cover it on the next videos. We are so grateful for you to take the time to watch this video through and we look forward to see you again and until next time, keep smiling.